Learn about saving babies together with today's guest. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Myrtle Beach Herald. We're focused on the Horry County Walk America next Saturday, April 3rd, and we're visiting with Colleen Shanley, the Executive Director of the PD Chapter of the March of Dimes. Good morning, Colleen. Good morning, Greg. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming in. We're getting so close. We're getting very close. Nine days away from the wall. Nine days away. Hours are ticking. This is a big one. It absolutely is. It's the biggest thing in the in the Myrtle Beach area for the March of Dimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, you all have some other year-round, I mean, fundraisers around the year, the, the Ride for Babies, which right. was, I guess, last October. Exactly. Uh, Lance Thompson visited with us uh, for a full day talking about that Ride for Babies. What are some of the other events you all do on an annual basis? We have our chef's auction that will be coming up soon. And we've got a real estate event and, of course, like you said, the motorcycle ride that I'm very much looking forward to. I'm sure you are. That's right. Are you a motorcyclist? Bob? I'm a little bit of an enthusiast, yes. Yeah. Yeah, getting out on a bike must be a thrilling thing. You all have a real estate breakfast, yes. a real estate event. You have that Star Chefs auction, which was very popular this very year. Very popular. That was great. I bought some great auction items that night. Well, we're looking forward to a great event this year, too. Yeah. Colleen, about yourself, before we focus on Walk America, are you originally from the area? No, I'm probably, you can hear from my accent, I'm definitely not from here. I'm actually from New Jersey. Oh, really? Yes, New well, Jersey. What brought you down to Horry County? Just vacationing, actually. Um, Love the area. My parents decided to buy a home down here, and about ten and a half years ago, I moved down. You're kidding. You've been here more than a decade. Yes, I have. You're about a local now. I'm a local, that's yeah. for sure. Golly, even with that little bit of an accent, I don't detect a thick accent there, Colin. When I go back north, you can definitely hear right. the northern right. in me. It back in. <laughs> Absolutely. Your folks have been down here now. If they've been down here more, I mean, they moved down here well before you did? No, actually, they moved after I did. Oh, wow. About a year after I did, and my sister moved down here as well. So most of my family is here in the way of the immediate family. have some cousins and relatives as well. Mm -hmm. So it's great. Now, what prompted your move down here ten and a half years ago? Actually, there wasn't anything in particular other than coming down here and just loving the area and loving to be so close to the beach right. and not shovel snow anymore. Oh, yeah. That was a definite advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I saw that you, you're a graduate of Rutgers University. Yes. What did you study, Colleen? Economics. Oh, really? Economics. Yeah. What, 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 when, when, when I hear someone says they major in economics, what, 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 what does economics normally lead into as a career? I mean, what are some of the things that you would do with an economics degree? Well, mostly, I actually, out of college, I went into a bro brokerage firm mm -hmm. in um, New Jersey um, and worked there for about three and a half years, but just really loved retail and found my niche in retail and became manager of um, Lane Bryant, actually. Okay. Um, in the north and then moved down here and that's exactly what I did. I just continued with my retail background. Mm -hmm. Did a little bit of traveling as well with um, the firm that I was with and I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. well, what is it about retail that gets you excited? Um, customer service. I just love dealing with people. I absolutely love it. Um, and the last um, retail place I was with was actually a children's clothing store oh, and nice. I just love being with children. Yeah. That is just so kids? Just so fun, kids. Sorry. Just so fun, kids. Right. Yeah. That's out at the at now the Tanger factory. Right, right. Myrtle Beach, former Myrtle Beach factory store. Exactly. Yeah. That's a great way. In, in that aspect of not only seeing the kids, but also their parents. You say customer service. Now, on the, on the retail side, right. customer service is both the pros and cons. The folks who are not happy with right. something they've purchased, something just didn't work out right, as well as folks who come back in because they love the store so much. What? How about dealing with the good and the bad. Is it tough? It's tough at times, but I think I just try to put the focus on that I am I know how I would want to be dealt with, and I just try to deal with it as, as the best way I can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not a real hard thing to do retail. It really isn't. I think a lot of people think you just have to customize yourself to the customers and deal with it at the best you can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And speaking of retail, there was a huge retail opening last week. I think, I guess last Tuesday night they had the Premier Gala 
last Wednesday, the opening in a big premier gala to benefit the March It On. Right. It was a great event. Um, so many people came out. The auction was incredible. Um, and since then, I've been to the mall several times enjoying oh, yeah. myself. It's oh, a yeah. great mall. Coastal Grand, Myrtle Beach. Absolutely. That's right. we got to get viewers in the PD in southeastern North Carolina to get down for that. I don't know if many of them made it in for the grand opening or the premier gala of the night before, but right. the, the Myrtle Beach Women's Club put it on. Right. March of Dimes was the prime beneficiary along with other local charities. Right. We were very fortunate to be one of their charities that they picked, and I'm very fortunate to have dealt with a lot of people there. Marta Thomas um, has been a great person. She's been so wonderful to us being on our committee, on our walk committee as well. Mm. And it's been a great, it was a great event. Absolutely. And of course, just now, uh, a little more than a week from Walk America, Horry County Walk America. It's April 3rd. Registration's at what time? 9 o'clock. Okay. And the walk starts at 10. Right. And I, I, I hear numbers between five and six miles for the walk. It's a, it's a good walk. I mean, it's at least five miles, potentially as much as six miles. It is. It's a little bit of a walk, but I think it's going to be a great day. We're hoping for that great day. We will have a great day. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be great, you know, being able to walk out on the beach. And it's just going to be a nice walk. I mean, you can do it at your leisure. We're not telling you you have to be back in an hour. Right. You know, do it at your leisure, and it's going to be a great event. And now the walk goes rain or shine. It does. Yeah. So we're praying for a lot of sunshine. That's right. That's right. Well, that's also the opening day of the Miracle League. And, of course, they're going to desperately need some sunshine for a day like that. I, I don't know if you were aware of the Miracle League kicks off, I guess, that afternoon. No. Well, that's great. We'll walk on the beach, get ready for that go day out of the Miracle League. Exactly, which would be very exciting. How about the when you, when you think about the aspects of the March of Dimes that really – got you interested to even take the step out of retail and been in retail for a little more than a decade. What was it about the March of Dimes that said a couple of months ago when you made the decision that you would come on board? What was it about it that got you excited? Well, I think with the March of Dimes, I've always contributed um, because of the um, reason of the babies. I mean, just knowing that the March of Dimes did things for babies was my only, you know, look at that. Um, the organization is just such a wonderful organization and my love for children and babies especially um, was the main reason for that that I know that they are helping save babies lives yeah Colleen what is it about kids what is it about babies that gets you so excited they're just so cute I can't help but love them um, I really don't have any children of my own but all the extended family that I have I love every single child talk about the March of Dimes. Can you, can you share with the viewers a little bit about how the March of Dimes began and what its original mission was and how it's changed over time? Well, actually, FDR, and a lot of people know that FDR in 1938 was the one who started because of the polio. Um, there was such a big, huge epidemic of it and an outbreak of it. It was a very scary time, and actually, that's where the dime part of it came in because everybody was collecting dimes and trying to get the research, and that, that happened. I mean, everything was done with that and brought the research to a head, and we found the vaccine for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the March of Dimes was a part of that. Right. Well, so now the mission has changed a little bit in that uh, now there's a work to fight premature births, so right. What are some of the other things that have changed in the forefront since the cure to fact polio well, has been found? The biggest thing is the premature birth uh, campaign, and that started actually last year. So we're on a five-year campaign with that. And it's such a, an incredible statistical thing that I've just found in the last couple of weeks just being with the March of Dimes. There are 476,000 babies born prematurely. And Each if year. you each year and if you break that down that's one in eight babies and that's a scary thing right now um, in South Carolina alone on an average week 149 babies and Greg it's so important for us to try to fund the research and the education to let people know about this crisis and it really is a crisis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when we hear that a child's born prematurely how does that differ from a, a nor I mean a, a child let's say month-wise or weight-wise or how, how does a premature uh, birth uh, differ from a normal birth? Well, it's, you know, very unfortunate um, that a lot of people have to go through that. I, on the other hand, didn't have that, you know, awareness. I didn't have that to look and see how, you know, babies are born so prematurely and at such a low ba birth rate. I couldn't even imagine what it's like to have a low birth weight baby. Um, and, you know, full term is full term. It's the nine months. It's the full nine months. And usually babies are born 
anywhere from six to 10 pounds or more. Um, and actually low birth weight in premature babies are born very prematurely up to like maybe 29 weeks or even earlier than that. And it's such a critical time. They're born at one pound, two pounds, less than a pound. Wow. It's just, it's amazing. I can't even imagine, and it's still hard for me to imagine mm -hmm. that our ambassador baby was born at one pound, 11 ounces. Um, and in, in the way of like some little props, I mean, this ring represents what a child has, when born, they can put this on the arm and go all the way up to the shoulder, and there's still so much room. That ring you can put on the arm and go all the way or up? Or the leg, and there's still so much room. I can't reiterate that enough. Mm -hmm. There's just, It's so big, and they're mm -hmm. so small. And you also brought a, a pair of diapers there. I did, right? actually. This one here is actually a full-term baby's birth weight, probably about 6 to, to 10 pounds, mm -hmm. and this one is a premature baby. Wait. Pull the other one. Uh, that's that's amazing. Pull that's, that a little. High. I mean, that are you hold them up just, time. That's incredible. That's yeah. just incredible. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. really is. It's so hard to believe that this is a normal full-term baby and this is a preemie. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other complications that can happen early on in a child's life, born prematurely? Well, there's vision. There's hearing impairment. There's heart problems. There can be a number of different things. Actually, I just spoke with Wendy, which is our ambassador mother, and um, Parker is going to have to have a G2 put in sometime in the very near future for feeding. He's just not gaining enough weight. Right now, he's 13 months and only 12 pounds. He's 13 months and 12 pounds. 13 months, 12 pounds. Mm. He's very small, mm. and it's very important that he gets that weight going. Mm -hmm. The G2 can have my daughter, of course, uh, albeit not born prematurely, at a cleft palate. So we had to get a G-tube early on to provide both the breast milk or other forms of nutrition through the tube for quite a while and helped her grow dramatically and of course has since, since removed it and she's doing fine after the surgery. But it's amazing the impact that something like that can have on a child's life early on. It definitely can and there's so many other lifelong complications that can go along with that and some of the babies do turn out to be just fine and we really need to fund the research to have that happen and to have the full-term babies born and to have safe, healthy babies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And research, what is the, when, when we think about the research components, I mean, a heck of a lot goes in when the funds are provided to the March of Dimes, whether it's a Walk America in Horry County or the Loris Walk later in the month, the Georgetown Walk, right. I think the same day, April right. 24th. Right. You also have the Dillon and Lake City walks coming up in early to mid-May. Right. There's a heck of a lot of walks going on, but of course all these funds are being pooled together in the PD division, sent on to Columbia and then sent on to wherever the March of Dimes headquartered, which is? That's actually in New York. In New York, okay. Mm -hmm. And then of course those funds are spread out throughout the country right. to research institutions right. that are constantly working to fight, fight, in this instance, premature births, but there's some other things going on on an annual basis on the on the research side? Well, I have to say in South Carolina, I'm very, very proud to say that actually 91 cents on the dollar goes into that funding. We definitely have all of that money going in there, so it's a great thing to know that where your money is going is going right into the research and the education right here in okay. South Carolina. And actually, there's a lot of other things that the March of Dimes in South Carolina does as well as um, they help fund in printing 50,000 of, these, of this book, of the Healthy Baby, um, to South Carolina women. And it's very important that people read this. I mean, here Wendy was, you know, she's actually, this is her second child. Parker was her second child. Mm -hmm. And full-term baby, the first one, Blaine was born um, full-term, no problems, no complications, very healthy. And then here she had Parker at a low birth weight and at 29 weeks. And so there's a lot of things that go into the funding, um, a lot of research. Um, MUSD has got a great um, person down there that's doing a lot of research for the premature birth campaign. Mm -hmm. Our ambassador baby's uh, mother, right. that she had a, uh, a normal child at a normal birth rate, normal birth time. Right first child and, and the second child uh, considerably different. Right. Um, sometimes they don't know. We really don't know in half the cases why premature birth is happening. And that's why it's so important for us to find the research and to do the research for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, Wendy was. She was. She had a fine baby the first time and the second time. Did everything the same way, but we just don't know why that happened. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. 
Where did the idea for a fundraising walk get its start, Colleen? How did the idea for an actual Walk America get its start? I know you mentioned the dimes component right. of all the dimes being raised to help coin the name March of Dimes. Well, it was around 1970 when the first walk started taking place, and the March of Dimes is the one who's very proud to say that we started the Walk America. Oh. Um, we were one of the first um, organizations to do that, and I think it's a great thing, actually. Mothers, um, back in, in the early ages, just walked around and basically collected those dimes um, door to door, had their lights on, and that meant that you can go up there and collect some money from, from neighbors and from friends. What, let's go ahead and begin to focus on the poster child. Of course, the the ambassador baby and the component of that aspect is such a big, big deal. It really is because it does hit home. If people don't understand, you know, what it's like to have a premature baby, here's our here's our example, and what a wonderful example he is. He's such a happy baby, regardless of the fact of the diff difficulties that he has, and that he probably will continue to have. Um, and it's real important to have a local ambassador. I feel for all the walks because they, they represent what some people don't even get the chance to see, and hopefully they won't get the chance to see, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, Greg, it's so important for people to, like I said, understand how important it is for this money. And you can start at any time. I mean, it's not too late. The walk's coming up, and it's not too late. Right. I mean, every dollar counts. Right. And, and let's talk about that, of course. Let, let, let's focus real quick on this poster you've brought. Get, give the viewers a sense of what they're seeing here on the poster. Okay. Well, when Parker was born, he was born at one pound, 11 ounces, and these are actually pictures of just a couple of days after he was born, you know, and um, one with his grandfather, and one, as you can see, with um, the nurse in the NICU, um, just so very small. I mean, I'm, she, he just looks like this little tiny, tiny creature, and um, born at one pound, 11 ounces, you can tell that that's, that's evident. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the idea of ambassador babies, they hold them. I mean, you, you you find one in a community, and obviously they're representing so many of the other children who are born prematurely, not only in the county but in the southeast. Right. They are the representation. I mean, we have an international ambassador, which is Michelle Reed's child, Amanda, um, and that's just a, a big, big um, help to the March of Dimes for people to understand and for them to tell their story. And then when it hits home locally, and we see that right from Conway Medical Center, that's where Parker was born, and then had to be rushed um, to another hospital to have all the um, facilities that he needed in a NICU. Mm -hmm. Why is the Ambassador Baby's participation important, and how are they chosen? Um, chosen basically through the hospitals. We go to the hospitals and we try to find where there are children that are born so prematurely and the re you know where we can get in touch with them and then mm -hmm. we go and contact them or the hospital will contact them for us and get us involved with them. And it's very important for them to, ha to know and to learn and to teach others of what they've gone through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it really makes it hit home. Right. I, I don't know if Horry County does the same thing as we, we were in October. We were in Marion, focused on the Marion and Marlboro County walks. And I think Joe Fisher was explaining that the, that the ambassador baby leads the walk, kicks off the walk, that everyone follows behind. They've got the police brigade in front leading off the walk, opening the streets. But the ambassador baby is right at the, at the head of the walk. Is that the same case down here? That is the same case. And usually that is the case in every walk. Um, the, the national, the, um, actually the local ambassador does kick off the walk. Um, it's, it's important for them to be the representation because they are the representation locally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we've got a great walk coming up. I'm really excited about that part of it. Yeah, let's get down to the brass tacks of that, Colleen. Obviously, we're nine days from the walk. It kicks off, as you said, the registration's at nine, the walk at ten. Right. Walking around six miles. Where does it kick right. off? It's actually kicking off at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion. Okay. Um, we're real excited. I've got a great committee. Only being with the organization such a short time, yeah. I've kind of been thrown in there, but I've got a great committee, Dennis Wade, leading the pack as the chairman, um, and he's done such a fantastic job. But we've done a lot of logistical ends of it, and I'm so excited about it this year. We've got Allison Reinhardt from WBTW is going to be our MC. We've got a kids' corner. We're going to have hot. So we're just going to have a great, great time. Yeah. We've got a lot of great teams that are doing wonderful things and trying to collect their money and raise their money, doing bake sales and different organizational things, uh, selling their beanie babies and their candy and just collecting money. Um, we've got Myrtle Beach High School 
who's having a yard sale on March 27th, right. um, which is great. You know, clean out the closets and come on and over there and bring your donations. And then you can even buy them back if you want to to help the school with their fundraising. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Connie at Paint Tree at Paintball. It's going to do a, um, actually a paintball tournament on mm -hmm. April 17th, and the proceeds are going to go towards the March of Dimes. Great. So we've got some great teams and great things planned and a couple of little secrets that I don't want to share Ooh, yet. Yeah. you got to come out and see. Absolutely. And we've got a kid's corner of the day of the walk. There's going to be clowns and face painting and all kinds of fun activities the day of, so you really need to come out. And that's our big celebration. That's the big hoopla, and that's the big... Um, celebration for all the team's efforts of what they've done, um, either in the last couple of weeks, in the last month, in the last year. And you all got some great sponsors this year. We do have some great sponsors. Myrtle Beach Herald is one of them, Wachovia, Bank of America. Um, we have Blue Cross, Blue, Blue, Cross Shield. Blue Shield and WBTW. TV 13. TV 13. And a great time with Allison Reinhardt Absolutely. there. Absolutely. She's actually the new... Uh, anchor of the Fox 43 News at 10, which kicks off in a couple weeks. That's oh. exciting. Right. It's very exciting. I'm so thrilled that she's going to be there that day. Oh, yeah. She's a superstar. And you've got so many other things. Now, will folks be walking up the beach, or are you walking out on Ocean Boulevard? No, we're going to actually be walking right on the beach. Really? We've already checked. The tide will be low tide, so we don't have to worry about that. It's not going to be too, too strenuous. And if you want to walk, that's great. If you want to just enjoy yourself and have a hot dog and just relax on the beach here in the ocean waves, mm -hmm. that's fine, too. Uh, the misconception a little bit is with when you're considered a walker that you literally have to walk, and you don't have to walk. For the March of Dimes, they consider walkers anybody that's raising the money to help with the funding of the, the walk. Mm -hmm. So if someone's not going to be in town next Saturday, they can still be in raising funds. You said there's an event on April 17th that will essentially give back right. to the uh, Walk America right. pot. Right. Mm -hmm. It's never too late. I mean, up to the day of the walk or even after the walk, if you're still raising money, um, that's fine, too. You can always contact our local office at 488-3463, mm -hmm. um, and we can give you the information, or you can go online to walkamerica.org. There's many different avenues, and it's never too late. Absolutely. And, of course, the PD Division's got so many things going on. We talked about the Marlboro Marion County walks in the fall. You've right. got the Dillon and Lake City walks next month. Right. I mean, in, in, Mar in May. You've got uh, the Georgetown uh, and Loris walks on April 24th. Right. And then, of course, this on April 3rd. There's walking going on There's all the time in the March of Dimes. All the time. And actually, it's pretty overwhelming right now for myself being only there a couple of weeks. But, right. you know, it's, it's just it's a great organization. I can't stress enough how wonderfully privileged I feel to be part of that, to helping save babies' lives. But we need everybody's help, too. Mm -hmm. And Every, together we can help do yeah. what we can. Every baby counts. That's right. Every baby counts. Of course, you've got a great group in Columbia that helps out a lot. Absolutely. Maureen and the folks up there coming down on a regular basis. Absolutely. They've been doing a lot to help me out um, being so new, um, and they've been fantastic, absolutely fantastic with this. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a great counterpart in Joe Fisher, who's our community director, and she's just been incredible for us. Oh, yeah. Joe is amazing. She and her husband, her husband, I mean, one of the great things is having someone like yourself who's a paid staffer for the March of Dimes and being able to turn to folks like Sterling or Dennis Wade or others who make such a commitment to give back and who find incredible volunteer hours. I am. I'm very fortunate to have all the great volunteers that I do have with me. Um, I've met such wonderful people and such dedicated and devoted people. It's been incredible. Um, everybody's been just so great and just really there for the cause. They want us to help save babies' lives. Mm -hmm. it, it, again, if a viewer couldn't be there next Saturday at the walk, but they wanted to raise some funds, they can raise them up, up to and until, but they'd want to call your office to get the address to go ahead and send in a, a donation if they were interested in donating, or could they just show up the day of the walk? Do you have anyone that will just show up the day of? Oh, there's plenty of people that will be showing up the day of. Actually, I've been getting phone calls of people that want me to send walker envelopes to them, and they will bring it that day. Right. Um, and that's fine. They can call me at the office. Again, the number is 488-3463. Okay, great. That 843-488-3463. If you had a minute, and we've only got a minute, Colleen, if you had a minute to sum up the most important aspects, not only of this year's Horry County Walk America, but the rest of the walks throughout the year, what would be the most important aspect you'd want to get out to a viewer? Just that it's really important for everybody to help join with us to fund the research and fund the education. Um, and as I said, it's never too late. And to help save babies' lives, we need to do it together. You heard her. Simple word, together. Saving babies together. 
helping to fund research and education together, fighting premature births together. Colleen Shanley and the entire crew at the March of Dimes, as well as all the volunteers on a daily basis working so hard to help babies together. Colleen, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me, Greg. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. We want to thank Colleen Shanley and her amazing love of babies for making today's Carolina people so special. Give the March of Dimes a call at 843-488-3463. The walk's next Saturday, April 3rd, 9 a.m. registration, 10 a.m. walk. You can get out the day of. Every baby counts. Let's save babies together.